uh, finance has always been uh, a key element to ensure many climate change and also forestry policies. Because with sustainable financing, first of all, the government can tap um, sufficient resources to implementing what they put um, in their policies. Um, also because the likes of sustainable financing, preventing many uh, policy um, to be translated on the ground. Sustainable financing not just only have the government to implementing their policies with sufficient uh, you know, uh, financial resources, but in many cases also become an important uh, financial incentive to mobilize you know, private sector, um, local communities, and also many uh, state agencies to um, implementing environmental friendly policies and, and projects and also have um, the local communities and also indigenous people who most of the time um, have, have a limited access to financial resources to transform their uh, practice on the ground and to be able implementing uh, many um, activity that, that are without um, sustainable financing. It would be extremely difficult for them to implementing sustainable um, you know, kind of um, forest protection activities and also to ensure their livelihood. When you're looking at the financing um, mechanism and also um, looking at the climate uh, change um, you know, policies and also how it is currently being financed, we actually um, can look at a different level. So at the global level, um, form, we do see that um, despite the fact that there is a global commitment, particularly from the donor, private sectors, um, and also international organization to provide sufficient uh, finance to um, drive transformation of chain in you know, land use chain, also in the way that people are now practicing their activities that might have an um, impact or on the on the global uh, communities, but also on our ecosystem services. Then, um, if you're looking at that complex network and also the policies, um, the finance that are made available have not been able to meet the expectation and what is required to do the transformation of chain. Um, at the national level, I think that we cross many um, donors. Um, international organization and also the government report um, highlighting you know the limitation of uh, to assess and also to ensure the sustainable financing um, to be able to implementing what they uh, envision and also uh, put it in their um, national government commitment towards uh, climate change mitigation and adaptation. Um, at, at the local community level, if you're also looking at the climate change finance flow um, and actually look at how much the money has been transferred to the local communities and individual households, particularly at the developing countries, you do see that um, most of the time um, the monies are channeled into government agency or to um, a, a large scale organization, uh, while in fact at the local level, local communities and indigenous people had a very limited access to this funding. The two points that we wanted to highlight is first of all, you do need to have a sustainable resources um, and ensuring sufficient financial resources um, to, um, you know, to, to translate all of the action on the ground and to uh, create a, a strong financial incentive for all of the stack stakeholders to for for that behavior chain. But at the same time, we do need to uh, look at the other sides of the coin to understand and to ensure that this money are well spent and reach to the target group, um, and to ensure the equitable outcome of that uh, climate change finance uh, distribution. Because most of the time, we are busy, you know, trying to um, identify different sources of funding and you know, to secure the funding. Uh, and, and overlook the importance of understanding how the funding and how the finance will be used in order to achieve, you know, effective, efficient, but more importantly, equitable outcome of any climate change policy.